Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial I'll be talking about cell fractionation. Now cell fractionation is a process of frax breaking down cell uh, for researchers for knowing uh, for getting different organelles inside the cell because we know for researchers we know uh, we need to get those uh, cell components like you want to research with ribosome you need to have ribosome in your hand pure ribosome in your hand to get those organelles isolated uh, pure in your hand we need to fractionate the cell to get those organelles apart right now in the cell fractionation process that usually being used is two important processes the general process is called differential centrifugation and another process is used further to get more pure version of those components which is called as buoyant density centrifugation now first of all the cell fractionation is carried out using a normal process of differential centrifugation differential centrifugation now what happens in this differential centrifugation we are cracking open the cell right so we are having uh, this test tube in those tube we just put our cell our suspension with cell so let's say suspension with cell is provided now it is rotated first in very low speed kind of 50,000 into G G is the gravity gravitation force uh, for kind of 15 minutes and we give it a spin in centrifugation so centrifugation means the spinning normally so after this spin what we get the results we get most of this materials that 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 is inside and most of the heavy materials that are there which heavy materials are settled at the bottom bottom of it so here comes the settling part the heavy materials and light materials or components are there now mostly heavy materials that are settled there is made up with uh, fractioned cells or broken cells cell components cell uh, cell and cell components along with that flagella you are getting flagella there those things at this pellet because whatever settles down we call it a pellet whatever remains in the so solution we call it a supernatant or soup now in the supernatant we are having most of it we are having all the organelles most of the organelles here and we are having also enzymes everything there now we just take out flagella from the whole mixture now again this is a process of taking out uh, resting out all of those heavy materials outside and getting smaller materials because we are spinning it from slow to high speed and once we are sp uh, spinning it from slow to higher speed we are getting more materials so we just settle down this flagella and all these things now we are getting organelle and enzyme in the soup now we take that soup out so we'll be now taking that supernatant out soup out and the supernatant what we are going to do we are going to so in the soup uh, and the supernatant we are going to add so let's the same thing is happening in this tube we are only having this supernatant and we give it a spin for kind of 1 lakh g 1 lakh into g for 60 minutes normally it's given and after that what happens again pellet formation is there so after the formation of this pellet so let's see here comes the supernatant there and the pellet is in this bottom now in the pellet we are having most of the heavyweight organelles like nucleus uh, like ribosome and all these components right so whatever things we are just settled down using this 60 minute process of 1000 uh, 1 lakh uh, into g rpm speed now in this case in the soup we are having still some very small materials which are nothing but enzymes so enzymes soluble obviously soluble enzymes are there soluble enzymes are there and we precipitated out nuclear uh, material like nucleus ribosomes but soluble enzymes are still there in the supernatant so how to get the soluble enzymes and more they get this nuclear or ribosome and these materials so using differential centrifugation that's why it's called differential because this process we differentiate from one or one thing of the cell to other thing of the cell because cell is made up with many components cytoplasmic but inside the cytoplasm there are different organelles mitochondria ribosomes Golgi apparatus many different things different sacs are there now uh, in uh, this uh, and also cell wall cell membrane components are there so here we are also having membrane components also having right so our membrane proteins will also be there so using this differential centrifugation we can uh, separate those components up to a particular level but we can't separate them in pure form 
to separate those cellular component in pure form we need to use another method of centrifugation and those thing is called buoyant density centrifugation so let me talk about that buoyant density centrifugation here so the term is called as buoyant density centrifugation now in this buoyant density centrifugation what we do actually we take the soup suppose we need to separate out the soluble enzymes from the soup so we'll be taking that soup here we take that supernatant here inside this tube we are having it so now we'll be adding this soup to another chamber which is having sucrose gradient so actually scientists prepared the sucrose gradient layer so we are having a tape which which is filled with sucrose then this sucrose will have a gradient in nature so what kind of gradient let's we are talking about a gradient of low concentration here to high concentration this is the gradient of sucrose as we are going to the bottom of the tube the concentration of sucrose is going up is going high so from 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 very low to a very high so this is the sucrose gradient formed now in this sucrose gradient we add our soup we add whatever we need to separate out then we centrifuge this this particular sucrose with our desired supernatant for a particular considerable amount of time now after the centrifugation what actually happens now as there is a gradient automatically there in sucrose concentration and those materials also been provided now suppose here so if this is the situation this is the tube so all of the supernatant materials are start moving from there because once we spinning these things the heav most heaviest material the heaviest material will migrate to the bottom and the lightest material will be in the top so the heavy materials are going to move according to their weight so as they are moving according to their density as they are moving through the sucrose through the density let's say so we know the density is very low to very 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 high here in the bottom so as they are moving whenever they reaches the density of their own type let's say this is a material this is a nucleus is moving and as the nucleus is moving and it reaches a particular density which is same like the density of the nucleus it will no longer move it will stay there that's the process because you are moving towards the density suppose this is the density gradient form and i am the nucleus i am moving whenever i find the density at the at this place just like me i'll stop there the no longer velocity will be applied so that particular component will stop there in the density gradient chamber now the chamber here is made up with sucrose right many other things can be taken but we've taken the sucrose here sucrose gradient centrifugation other name of this so it is moving and whenever it finds the density like its own it will stop there it will no longer migrate so in this way we can separate out different density containing components in the sucrose gradient chamber right this is called buoyant density centrifugation because we are using the buoyant density of cell particles to separate them right so that's the whole process and this is the way to get the pure version of your components because remember one particular component may not most of the time they they should not have a same type of buoyant density different buoyant density that's why the separation will be there in different way and then what we need to do we need to separate we need to take them out how we'll take them out we simply break this uh, chamber from the bottom and we take simply very gently one after another time nowadays boats and robotics are there robots are doing all the job for us robotic hands are there so less uh, chance of error is there but this is the process of cell fractionation guys using differential centrifugation and buoyant density or sucrose gradient centrifugation thank you